nothing is more visual than seeing a coral bleach and dying and then slowly get covered by turf and algae. In 2017, we lost around 65% corals. Almost similar in 2021, the seawater temperature exceeded 39 degrees. But uh, that doesn't tell the whole story. You can see this as uh, the front line against climate change. Uh, we've been monitoring Abu Dhabi's uh, fish stocks for over 20 years as an agency. We have staff that are available every day at the landing sites, uh, both interviewing fishermen and uh, taking length frequency samples to estimate, uh, you know, the status of the stock. And in recent years, we uh, noticed a very sharp decline in the Emirates fish stock. Uh, my grandpa was a fisherman. I grew up uh, very much connected to the sea, so it was always something that I wanted to conserve and protect. Before I joined the agency, I had an interest in fishing and fisheries because I'm a recreational fisherman. And when I started joining the agency, the bleaching event was occurring at the same time. What caused the mass bleaching event was high seawater temperature. And that uh, brought to me to focus just how drastic uh, it affected corals. The Arabian Sea is characterized by naturally high temperatures, high salinity, and relatively shallow waters. This makes corals here even more vulnerable to a changing climate. But the initiative aims to turn this heat into an opportunity. So the way we assess the corals, we lay down a transect on the reef and we take quadrat images using this with a still camera. And we take the images and we assess them back in the office. It can be an uphill battle sometimes, especially when we're dealing with things like mass bleaching or mass die-offs. And uh, that motivates us to preserve the environment more than ever. Corals here are some of the toughest corals found anywhere else in the world. They're able to withstand extremely high temperatures we're mainly focusing now on resiliency and finding strongest corals and trying to spread the genetics of these resilient corals that have been able to withstand back-to-back -back bleaching. The Gulf is considered a living laboratory for climate change. Researching how corals around the world might be able to adapt to the climate crisis couldn't be more urgent. Not only are they the first ecosystem that could go extinct, but a quarter of all marine life relies on them. If corals fail, so do fish and fisheries. We're now at the fish lab, and this is where we study the biology of uh, several fish species. We've bought these samples from the fish market, um, and what we do here is uh, look at morphological measurements, uh, but also extract gonads to look at reproductive biology, and otoliths uh, to age certain uh, fish species. Our work involves looking at the health of the fish stock and also working on uh, policies and regulations in order to ensure that we sustain a healthy fish stock for future generations. Although we're seeing very positive uh, results from the policies that we've implemented, it's also important to stress on how healthy habitats play a crucial role in the restoration of fisheries. The various habitats here in Abu Dhabi 
from mangroves to seagrass to corals are all interconnected and uh, species flow within them. Abu Dhabi is now also on a mission to restore seagrass. This will create a habitat for many marine species, such as the dugongs, all while absorbing carbon and filtering water for the future survival of corals. Some of our, our monitoring sites have seen recovery of up to 80, some of them even 90%. I think it's extremely important to understand how these corals are able to withstand these conditions and try to apply it to other places around the world. There's a lot of things that are understudied or actually undiscovered in the region. So I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And I know there's many risks to this project, but I believe the risk of inaction is far greater.